Okay, hi everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today on our webinar on searching images. So we're very excited. This is the first time we've offered this session. Um, and uh, whenever we offer a session, particularly when it's new, we're always looking for feedback about was it what you wanted? Would you make any changes? So we'll be sending out a quick survey um, after today's session just to kind of touch base. We'd love to hear your feedback. So I'm Orby Dingwall. This is I'm Christine, Christine Nielsen. And we're going to be taking you through image searching for today. So the first thing we want to do, we always like to do a check in uh, with GoToWebinar just to make sure you know how to interact with us. Um, if you need to ask us a question, or if you want to ask us a question, you want to look for either, and you've, if you've lost your menu um, rectangle, then you can click on sort of this flower icon to get your menu back. And if you can't find uh, there, so then, there we go. Uh, you might also need to click on this little sideways uh, white arrow in the orange rectangle, and that will bring back your, your menu. And then you can enter in the questions box, any questions that you might have for us. Um, and it should be that straightforward. So we're going to just make sure that you got through that with us. And so we'll just launch a really quick poll here. And we'd like you to just let us know if you were able to locate that questions box. Yeah, this one. Okay, and I've just lost it here. There we go. Okay, perfect. So everyone who responded was able to locate it. So like I said, if at any time you have a question for us, just pop it in there. Now we've got four objectives for today. The first, as always, is to make sure you know about our library services. <clears throat> Then we're going to get into some technical details about uh, Creative Commons licenses. And we're also going to review about when you need to um, sort of provide attribution anytime you're using an image. So that's um, attribution is, you know, whether you're including the statement about where you got the image from or who took it or where it's from, that kind of thing. And then the most exciting part, which Christine is going to take us through, is actually showing you and taking you to the places where you can search for images that you can use for whatever you need to use them for. So first of all, we're talking about MyNet. Um, MyNet is for... Um, everybody who works at Manitoba Health, uh, seniors in active living, all fee-for-service physicians in the province, and staff of our participating regional health authorities. Um, our MyNet sessions are free for anyone, so if you happen to know of anybody and maybe they don't qualify, um, they're uh, welcome to participate in our online sessions. There is a core group of us here, and Christine and I are your primary liaisons. And Cheryl is your primary library assistant. We're also partnered with the Winnipeg Regional Health Authority's virtual library. So whenever um, we can't be here uh, or Cheryl's not here, we do have some backup. So sometimes you might see some messages from that team as well. But we're your core team. You're in good hands with us. And so if you don't already, please make sure you sign up for a library card. Um, this is really great for uh, in, for those times, then you've got that paperwork out of the way, and then if you need an article or if there's something that you need, you can just pop us a message and you've, you're already in our system. So if you haven't already, sign up for that. The registration form is on our website. And speaking of our website, we've got a new website address. So if you have a bookmark, please just make sure you update that bookmark. And we've got... Um, Four core services. The first is anytime you need more information on a topic, you can just pop us an email or fill out our form online and say, hey, I need 20 review articles about this topic, or I need to know everything there is on that topic, or whatever your parameters might be. The more information you provide us, um, the, better of, the better we'll be able to match our results that we're able to send to you. 
And then if ever you need a full text article, same thing. You can just send us a message and say, hey, I heard about this article. Can you please send it to me? Or you did that great lit search. Now you need the full text article or however you hear about information or articles, including if you're just searching on Google or searching in PubMed, pop us that email and say, hey, I need this article. We'll send it to you. We offer a current awareness service to help you keep up to date in, um, in new trends in the literature. And we offer all kinds of education sessions like the one today. So if there's anything ever you are interested in learning about, we're happy to create a session about it. This one today on searching images was sparked by a, um, a inquiry that we got from a client in the late fall. And we thought, hey, like this is actually kind of hard to answer. Um, and I bet that there's, or we bet that there's other people who are interested. So if you've got things like that, make sure you let us know. Also, the recordings of all of our previous sessions are on our website, so you can visit us there. Okay, so talking about images, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you through the really exciting technical <laughs> things. And then Christine is gonna show you how to go live and search for those images online. And if I get mixed up or um, if things that I'm saying aren't totally clear, Christine is gonna make them, make them clear. That's my job today. That's your job today. All the fun stuff and making sense of all the other stuff. There you go. No pressure. <laughs> so if you're gonna wanna use an article or an image, um, how, do you, how do you make sure that you actually have permission to do so? So the first thing is, if you didn't create that image uh, or you don't have the copyright for it, you need to get permission from the copyright owner or you can pay for the right. So sometimes if you're searching for cool images, it often seems like the coolest ones, you need to pay for them, which makes sense, right? It, costs a, it takes a lot of time and skill and effort to create those neat things. Um, you can also assess, is this in the Creative Commons or the public domain? And we're gonna talk about those. And you can also look into whether you have permission to use it under fair dealing. So these are all the kind of things we're gonna go through in the next sort of like 15 minutes. So the first is copyright. And this is sort of, it's a legal term, it's enshrined in legislation, um, and it's about who owns a copyright and who has permission to, or who has the use uh, the rights to use this image or this work. And so often it, so it kind of depends on who owns the copyright. If you, uh, you might be the creator of the image, but if you've been commissioned to create that work, or if you work like for the government um, or for some other corporation, it might be their copyright. So you have to make sure that you know who owns it. Um, and there are lots of laws pertaining to copyright. Here in Canada, we have to abide by Canadian copyright laws. Um, and in a lot of places, they're kind of similar or the same, but they're also sort of different. So how long copyright is valid in Canada? It's 50 years from the, uh, from the end of the calendar year <laughs> uh, that the creator died. Um, so to be technical, <laughs> so there's no confusion, yeah. Um, and in other countries like the US and the UK, it's 70 years. Um, so it's all kind of different and you have to just kind of be aware of these different things. So it's, I mean, depending on what it is, it might be a long time, it might not be a long time. Now, we're gonna talk about copyright and fair dealing and the creative commons and the public domain. And we're not spending too much time, and we're just doing it at a high <laughs> level. Uh, but it is it is important, and it does roll into once we're searching for images, it's helpful to kind of know a little bit about these things. So fair dealing. Um, oh, I will mention that we will send you a copy of the slides after today's session. So you don't need to worry about reading this super quickly or memorizing it. But the gist of fair dealing is, is that... Um, for research, private study, education, parody, satire, criticism, review, and news reporting, um, you can use works. Uh, and there are just some caveats about uh, just because you're using it for education doesn't mean you can make a copy and distribute it to, 
you know, the thousand people in your health region or the 2000 people sitting in your lecture theater or whatever you might be doing. So it's, there's kind of like first step, can you use this copyrighted thing for education? Yes, but can you make a million copies? No. Can you use the whole thing? No. Can you, there's, you know, kind of caveats around that. Um, but it is helpful to kind of think about, is this under fair dealing? And then the public domain, um, these are things where there is no permission whatsoever needed to copy or use works that are in the public domain. So things in the public domain are those where the copyright has expired. So the creator created it, then they passed away, and then 50 years went by, maybe in a couple months, <laughs> um, and then it's in the public domain. Some, uh, some stuff is automatically in the public domain if uh, the creator chooses to put it there instead yeah. of uh, claiming copyright. So lots of people, they just say like, I made this cool thing, I want people to use it, I want it to be out there, um, it, and they just put it directly into the public domain. Uh, now, one thing we have to be um, careful of is just because it is super old, uh, well, I mean, depending on our definition of super old, um, but just because it is, you know, sort of more than 100 years old, uh, doesn't mean that it's necessarily in the public domain. So sometimes what happens is something will be created, and then 20 or 30 years later, it'll be like slightly modified so that the copyright will kind of renew on it. Uh, so you have to be kind of careful about that. And you have to read the terms of service to understand the requirements. Is that what you were going to say? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, like, if there's if something that was translated, a new translation oh, would yeah. be under new copyright. Something, you know, how so often they have, like, a new edited version of Pride and Prejudice or whatever. Yeah, or um, new images or, yeah, or whatever. whatever have you. And so, so the new version of the thing now has its own copyright. Uh, but we mentioned public domain, I mean, not not to get really technical, so you have to like really think through how many years has it been, and is this the original, and that kind of thing, but more so that if you see an image and it says public domain, you can go, ah, I can just use this. <laughs> um, but you still read the terms, but you can use it. So searching for images in the public domain, um, there's some really cool sites where everything on them is in the public domain. And these, so I'm just going to take us live to one of these sites. Uh, so it's this Wikipedia page. I'll just zoom in so that you can actually see it a little bit. And they have this whole list of public image domain resources. Um, and they have all kinds of things like history. Ireland has its own. It was funny that there's certain countries that are on here. Um, and so this is really neat. So if you're interested in image searching and you're going to be doing a little bit about it, you can come through here. So there's all kinds of things like um, that they, this is a great starting point and then you can go straight through it. So there's Flickr, the public domain um, things that are on the photo sharing site of Flickr. The British Library has a bunch and it just goes on and on and on and on. So this is really neat and a really great starting place um, if you were like, I don't want to fuss with knowing the, oh, now I've lost my thing and oh my goodness here. Um, there we go. Um, yeah, if you don't want to do a lot of fuss and saying like, is this copyrighted? Can I use this? What is this? This is just a place where you can go and you know that all these things are in the public domain. And there is another one too here, um, the public domain review, similar kind of thing. It's got a bunch of bunch of um, images and a bunch of sources where you can search. And sometimes it's helpful, like if you just want a cute picture of a cat, mm -hmm. those probably aren't the greatest sites for that kind of thing. But if it was more, I'm looking for some, you know, historical photos or, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, things that governments have produced. Often governments put things in the public domain. So that was copyright and public domain. Uh, now the Creative Commons. So this is a like really great initiative where it's basically just all that stuff on the internet that is creative, um, is helpful to have in a common place, and then you can just kind of search one one place. Not everything in here. Everything in here has sort of different use spec uh, 
um, details. So you've got to kind of look through. And that's why exactly why we're doing today's session is just to help you navigate these kinds of places. So this is a little um, infographic. I broke it up into three because it said I could do that. <laughs> um, but I just think it's, it's really helpful um, as being a quick info. So in traditional copyright, all the rights are reserved. You can like look at it once and then that's it. <laughs> you can't use it, you can't put a new heading on it, you can't translate it, you can't do anything. And in the Creative Commons, it gives you the right to use these things and share them um, and allows you also as a uh, content creator to make some specifications. You might say, you are free to go out and use this, just don't be touching it. Mm -hmm. um, and other people are like, take this, like, you know. Make changes. Make changes, change. yeah. Uh, now, you might have also come across some of these license types. And frankly, I find these really confusing. I don't know why they make them so hard to follow. Uh, but that so you, if you are going to be doing a lot of searching on images, you might want to print out a page or have a page like this at easy reference so you can quickly know what CCBY stands for or CCBYND. Um, and they all have different things. Like the little person means that you need to provide attribution and just say, hey, you know, Christine Nielsen took this awesome photo, which is funny because she just told me earlier that she's not very good at, at her photos, but um, even still, you can just say like, this photo is by Christine Nielsen. Sometimes that's all people want. Other times people say like, you can use my photo if you name me, but you can't sell it or you can't use it for commercial purposes. So that's just what these breakdowns is about. It's like, it's free to, free to use, but just not as long as you're charging for it. Um, so there's a whole whack of different symbols uh, that you should be watching for. And then these are some of the common ones. So attribution, that's where you have to tell where you got it or who made it. Non-commercial is an important one. We in, you know, in healthcare and at the kinds of places that MyNet provides service to, you tend to not do commercial things, but I mean, maybe sometimes you do. Um, and also, if you are a content creator looking to create things, you might also want to know about what should, if I'm putting things into the commons, um, what do I or don't I want to be uh, tagging it with? Share a like is when you can um, use it and no derivatives. I always forget what this one is. So derivatives, I think, is, is the making changes, right? Oh, you right. can't make a derivative work from something. Um, the share alike is you can use it, um, but then you also have to share what you did. So you can't be like, I'll use yours, but no one can use mine. Right. Yeah. I'm going to put a different border around it, and then no <laughs> one can use it or whatever. Good. Um, and so in the Creative Commons then, then you have to, which Christine is going to walk us through, uh, then you just have to read the terms and conditions for each image that you're looking at. And often it's about acknowledging the author of the image. So how do you actually provide that attribution? Um, there's a bunch of different ways and sometimes it's really helpful when they just tell you exactly how they want you to do it. Um, sometimes they just say like, you just need to provide the author or you need to include the author and the title of the work, what, where you got it. So the important thing is just to kind of read through and, um, uh, and include the attribution that you like. Now, if, you know, for little sessions that maybe you're teaching, you know, in your, um, in your hospitals or in your workplaces, I mean, the copyright police probably aren't coming after you. You should still give it. You should still give <laughs> attribution, absolutely. But just as far as, you know, when are the copyright police coming after you, it's definitely if you're selling things, mm. definitely if you're making them freely available on the, um, on the internet if you, if you weren't. Um, but it is about like appropriate, you know, you're using somebody else's work, you should give them a shout out. So here's a little, um, a little instance of uh, the one sort of mountainous with the sun is the image that we've used. And just at the bottom there in the red, you should put what the title is, 
in green is who the author is, and then in the sort of bluey color is the license with the link as to where you got it. So um, you'll notice, so after today's session, you'll probably start noticing places where people do or maybe don't include attribution. So I know often like in news articles, um, in those photographs, then they'll put a little blurb like right on the bottom of that image saying that this photo is by Christine Nielsen, or maybe it's by like the Associated Press or whatever. Um, and in other times, then they'll have a more substantive citation right underneath the image. So there's a couple of different ways that you want to do things. Unless you're, you know, big into graphics and photo editing and stuff, it's probably easiest just to put that attribution right underneath the photo. Another way you can do it, and what we've done today actually is um, similar how you would cite sources in a uh, reference list for sort of written papers. Um, you can also, again, depending on the uh, requirements in the associated with that image, um, you can just put it in your reference list at the end of your presentation. So those are two common ways. Now, if this is you feeling like this and you're like, I just want to find cute cat photos to put into my presentations, how do I know whether I can do that or not? We're going to go through an example. And it is called, can I use that picture? Here we go. Now this might appear daunting at first, but as we go, but it's a flow chart. And I'm gonna see if I can blow it up here. Just a little bit more. I think that that's pretty good. So can I use that picture? Now, interestingly enough, as Christine and I were putting this session together, um, we asked this question of this picture <laughs> exactly uh, because, we were trying to, it's on a page talking about how you can use pictures, and it seems like you could easily use this, but only if you paid for it, but yet you could download it. It was really confusing. So we're gonna use this as an example. And going through this flowchart is actually really quite easy. So can I use that picture? Do you own the copyright? In this case, we don't, it's the creator who used it. So do I own the copyright? Well, maybe you're not sure. First question, did you create the picture yourself? If you snap the picture, it's yours, you can use it. Uh, so did you create the picture? We did not create this picture, no. Did we get permission from the owner? No, we didn't. Um, and sometimes it's pretty easy to do. You can just message them and say, hey, can I use this? And they would say yes or no, or whatever they might say. Um, but in this case, we did not get permission. So no, we didn't. Did we purchase the right to use it? No, we wanted to save the, I don't know, $5 or whatever it was, so no. Is the image licensed with Creative Commons? So then, so we didn't find any of this information on the site with this picture, so we would have to say that no, it wasn't. Is the image in the public domain? No, because, or was the image created by the government? No. Has the copyright expired? Nope, because it was a really recent post and the guy indicated he had just updated it. <laughs> so definitely uh, the copyright had not expired. Did the creator put it in the public domain? If they did, they didn't indicate it, so no. Are you using it under fair use? So here we're into fair use. Are you using the image to comment, critique, or parody? Um, like, not, not really. really. Uh, is the image being used for educational purposes? And we said, yes, we are here to teach you about using images. So we said, yes. And the answer is probably. <laughs> a resounding maybe. A reson resounding maybe. But um, so in this case, we thought it's totally fine to go to this website where we can tell you that the source is thevisualcommunicationguide.com, that we really like this image. If we were um, professors at the university and we were teaching to undergrads and we wanted to say, okay, for the next five assignments we're doing, use this, um, use this uh, flow chart to assess whether you can use pictures, we would contact, the, like, or I would, I would contact the author and say, this is what I'm intending to do. Can we use it? Should we buy it? Or what should we be doing? Alternatively, you could send people to it also. That's right. Yeah, depending on how you, yeah, if you had, I mean, or maybe in a younger school, you would want to print it for them and give it out in that case. Anyway, so 
um, probably is the case. So we felt comfortable coming to this site, showing you where it is and endorsing it. I have one comment. Yeah. Um, so we kind of, we, we talked about fair dealing. Oh yes. This one talks about fair use. Right. So in Canada, we have fair dealing. In the United States, they have fair use and this was produced in the US. And so that's why there's the, the discrepancy there. It's similar, but my understanding is not 100% the same. Not 100% the same. But close enough for yeah. our purposes. Yeah. Yeah, so we love this as a, or I love this, Christine. It's Christine good. thinks it's good. <laughs> just a rave review from her. Um, and so it's just a helpful flow chart to help you get through. Maybe, so maybe we should stop for questions. Yeah. If anyone has questions before we go to the live demo, please enter them in the question box now or anytime really. Um, but if any of that didn't make sense or you wanted some more details about it. It was pretty fast. It was pretty fast. It's because I was worried they would get bored and just be like, where are the cat videos or like the cute, the cute girl with the question mark, pondering, wondering. Okay, we're not seeing any questions. Please feel free though to ask us as we're going along. We'll be monitoring our question box. So I'm going to turn it over to Christine now. Okay. So uh, now for the fun part. Yeah, as Excellent. if that wasn't fun. Copyright law, fair, fair use, fair dealing, creative commons. So all, fun. The, all the things. All the fun um, things. So there are a whole bunch of different places that you can go um, to look for images. We've got a bit of a list at the end of our slides, which uh, as Ruby said, we're going to, I think you said we're going to send out the slides mm -hmm. afterwards. So um, that's good. We probably won't have time to look at all of them. Um, we're going to look at, at a few. Right, so the first one um, we're going to start with, can I close this? So, mm -hmm. Okay. We do have a question. Oh, we do have a question. Yeah. Do authors respond in a timely manner? And where do you find their contact information? Excellent question. Uh, the timely manner, I would say, depends on the, the actual author. Um, in terms of contact information, uh, wherever it is that you got the material, in theory, you should be able to figure out who has the copyright. So if this was um, as part of a, so for the sake of argument, uh, that can I use the picture was in a uh, journal article and we wanted to use it. Well, unless the uh, journal is set up that authors maintain the copyright, it belongs to the journal. So we'd have to contact the journal and then go through whatever processes they have. Sometimes they have online forms where you can make requests and things like that. Um, this came from a blog post. Uh, so we know who wrote it. So we, we could contact them individually and say, hey, can we use this? Um, but in terms of, of timelines, it's, it's anybody's it guess. Yeah. So, yeah, good question. So yeah, it would just be, if it's really the, um, sometimes it's, Sometimes people get back to you like right away. So if you really love it, pop them a message. And if it's like too hard to figure out, you know, who they are or how to get a hold of them, or if they're not responding in a reasonable time, just find a different one. I, I would say you could follow up first, oh, but, up. <laughs> but I guess it depends on how much time you've got. Um, so yes, so I'm gonna close this right now. All right, so. Everybody likes Google. I'm going to go out on a limb and say everybody likes Google. Uh, everybody's used Google. Um, so you might have used the Google image search before. You might not. Depends. Um, and there are two ways you can go about it. So you can just use the regular search and then within the, the search results, you could switch over to images or you can go directly to the image search up in the corner here. I'm going to make this bigger if I can. Lovely picture. So oh, too big. Um, and just search images straight out of the gate. Okay. So you can tell that we are in the image search because it says Google with images at the bottom and uh, we can type whatever we want. So Orvi likes kittens today. Ooh. So let's say she's doing a presentation. She needs a cute picture of a kitten. So kitten. And we get like a gajillion pictures of kittens. Um, the important thing in terms of what we just discussed about um, reuse and things like that is if you go over to tools here underneath the search box, you get some extra stuff. So you can say, I want a big picture. I want it to have, 
there we go. I want it to have a transparent background, which would be weird, but you never know. Oh, look, there are some. Um, but most importantly, usage rights. So things that are labeled for reuse with modification. So you can make some changes. You could like insert a little speech bubble and the kitten's talking or something. Um, things that are labeled for reuse. So you cannot change it, but you can use it. Um, things that are labeled for non-commercial reuse specifically. So they don't have a problem if this is for a non-commercial thing, but commercial stuff, forget it. Um, so with modification and without modification. Okay, so I'm actually gonna get rid of the transparent thing because that's gonna hamper our efforts here, I think. Um, and I'm gonna say uh, labeled for reuse. Oops, there we go, okay, here we go. So we have a bunch of things. And so what Google has done, um, basically it's looking for pictures anywhere, right? So it could be um, anybody's website, right? So somebody's got a blog or, or what have you. Um, you'll notice that some of them are labeled as like Flickr, um, some are from Wikipedia, which is interesting. Pixneo. Uh, Pixneo, never heard of that one myself. There you go. Um, but if you if you click on one of the pictures, say this is this is the one, um, right? You can see it may be subject to copyright. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, but if you click on the link, it should take us to the page where it came from, and then hopefully then you can see. Um, whether there are any restrictions. Uh, oh, look at that. It says you are free to share, free to remix. So it's at the work, but you have to make your attributions. And if you remix, transform, or build upon it, you have to distribute your contribution under the same type of license, right? So um, you have to be willing to share um, any new products that you derive from it. So that's that. Um, and that's, that's pretty straightforward, I would say. Yeah. Um, if we go back, I'm just going to close this. Um, I mean, Google is Google. It looks at all kinds of sites. So just about anything out there. You don't need to do like nurses. I was, oh, I was, oh, no, that's okay. I was going to do nurses. Okay, actually. great. Um, let's see. So um, you can see that it's, it's still got the category labeled for reuse. And you'll notice that like there's, there's, a, there's different kinds of pictures here. Oh, hold on. I have a, a question. How did you get the options to choose from under images? Um, from that, I think you, you, you mean under the tools. So if you click on tools, that's where this, you know, the, the size, the color, uh, the usage rights, the type. So you could say, I only want a line drawing or a clip art, um, something that's new versus something that's not. Um, that's an, all under tools there. So, um, Worst comes to worst, try she, clicking on more yeah. <laughs> or settings if you forget. She got it. Yeah. So excellent. Wonderful. Um, yeah. So as I was saying, like there's a whole different category of pictures in here. We've got like actual people. So like there's um, looks like class photo in here. Um, there's oh Disneyland first aid. Somebody uh, took a picture of the folks who work at Disneyland first aid. Um, there's you know, a whole bunch of, like the older older pictures, there's some drawings. I don't know what the deal is with the little finger puppets. Um, but yeah, so different different types of pictures are showing up here than if we had said no filter. And in this case, we get lots of like stock photos of models dressed in scrubs and things like that, right? Um, so I, do, I would like to just throw out there that the ones that uh, were labeled for for reuse, they have not said, you know, like this is copyrighted, et cetera. But I would argue that if you've got like this picture of the lovely people at the Disneyland first aid uh, station, it, it might not be too cool to use their picture without their permission. Um, just throwing that out there. I mean, historical photos get used in things all the time, but again, um, they're real people. So something, something to keep in mind. All right. And I will say too, um, sometimes I'll be searching, I'll find the greatest image on one of these sites. Mm. And even though I've used that labeled for reuse kind of thing, and I go to that site and then I find out actually it's not mm. really, it's not appropriate to use, or I have to pay for it. That doesn't seem to be a 
it's not foolproof. It's not foolproof. Yeah. Um, and sometimes too, then it takes me to places and I see the beautiful image and I think, I don't know that you even have the right to be using this <laughs> image on your blog post or your whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not foolproof. You still have to then go through, like maybe just click on that Disneyland one. Um, and so then we go through right to the, you can't just like grab it right from that page and pop it into your presentation. You have to come through to this site and then say, okay, what, what have they included as their, um, okay, so as this their is use? A little small, so I'm gonna try and make it bigger. Okay, so. So it's got the, um, the person sign there, like right here. Oh, uh, there we go. So that's attribution and then Sorry, I clicked on summer rights reserved. Yeah. So it says to you can't you can copy and redistribute this. That's interesting. Um, as long as you provide attribution. That's right. Yeah. So um, the the person who took this picture is Lauren Javier. Javier. Um, so in their Flickr account, that's that's the setting that they have set. And I guess this must be from their vacation photos. Um, yeah so again it doesn't hurt to look and if you if you if you kind of look at the page you can find more information about what that means too. yeah right and google's a great place to start sometimes you find it what exactly what you're looking for right away absolutely um oops, sorry, I, just that. I did um okay so you know, you'll notice there's also some some options that Google kind of throws in there to make me narrow things down. Um, so, for example, they've got clip art, they've got students, they've got, thank you, that's interesting. Um, I'm not sure what the day part is about, um, but it's it's kind of harvested terms from these different sites with these pictures um, in order to try and help you narrow things down. So if you were interested in cartoons, for example, you could click on that and we have um, cartoon versions of of nurses, right? And apparently some videos too. That's interesting. Um, yeah. And then you're down the rabbit hole, and then you just got, gotta try and keep yourself from getting too far in. Um, so 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 Google is always an option. Um, there are some other options too. Um, so let me just double check here. Uh, so I, oops. Don't forget. Hang on. Just going the wrong way. I am going the wrong way. Okay. Um, yeah. So there are various image sites as well. So um, you, you might have heard of some of them. So the example was Flickr, uh, where people create an account and they post uh, pictures, and they can either say you can use this or you have to pay me or, or what have you. Um, so this is an example of one here that I like called Pixabay. Um, you'll you'll want to note that a lot of times you need to create an account um, in these in these sites. So there's things like um, like Flickr, Pixabay, and uh, Raw Pixel was mm -hmm. one that I also found the other day. Um, and depending on what you want to do, like in Pixabay, if you want to use photos other than like the really tiny like thumbnail versions, then you need to create an account, but they can still be free, right? Um, so let's try, let's try kittens here. Okay, so lots of pictures of kittens. Um, let's say you really like the one in the tree. Okay, so this one, it says on the side here, free for commercial use, no attribution required. Look at that, isn't that nice? Um, and there are there are different when you log in there would be different sizes right um, although this one yeah so if you click on free download you've got the different options for sizes so if you want something that you would want to make larger you'd want a, a larger file size all that kind of thing okay um, and then it's got information further down on the side as well so it's got you know the image type it's got when it's created um, when it was uh, uploaded, all that kind of information. And there should be, um, so Kessa here, up, it's, it's in tiny, tiny letters. Um, Kessa is the creator. 
or, or at least the person who has uploaded it, one assumes that they are the creator. Um, so you can see what other works that they have done as well. So they've got some, some combines and an old bus. <laughs> um, someone sitting by the river. Um, oh, they're from the Czech Republic. Look at that. Uh, but yeah, so if you if you wanted to um, use this one, you could. It says no attribution is required. It's always kind of nice if you do, but it is it's not uh, it's not a deal breaker yeah. in this case. And I find too sometimes if I'm doing um, a presentation or using a bunch of images at the same time, then it's always uh, one thing it, that's really important is managing where you got them from and what the rights are and so sometimes even on one like this i'll still put the attribution in my slides just so that i know that i've got myself covered and that i didn't just forget to do it because mm -hmm. sometimes i'll be like oh like this image is okay but it's not quite what i want and i'll just grab it and pop it in my presentation and then sort of forget and then i've got to go back and refine it to double check on the permissions so um, getting into the good habits of just pulling that in, or maybe just even in your, if you're using PowerPoint, you could just create a little note like no attribution was required. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and there are, again, like Google, if I can spill it off at the same time, um, there are various topics covered. I'm going to try Lyme disease. Um, and so we've got a bunch of pictures here, some lovely ticks. Um, Oh, I will point out actually, if you look at the top in very tiny, tiny letters, this gray band, these ones are spo uh, sponsored by Shutterstock. So these ones may not be free. Um, you gotta keep your eyes open. Um, I, I, I don't know, maybe you want a happy little summer salting tick. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe you want the little warning tick sign. Um, there are some, some options here. So. You might not think that there's super uh, health and medical oriented stuff in here, but there might be some. It just depends on, on your topic. Mm -hmm. um, before we go too far into getting into the subject specific things, because there are some um, some sites that are, are more focused on like health and, and clinical photos and images. Um, I want to show you one more thing, which is the Creative, Creative Commons plugin, oh, yeah. uh, which is super cool. Unfortunately, it is not available for um, Explorer, so Internet Explorer, if you use that. But if you have uh, Firefox or uh, Chrome um, or Opera, there are plugins available for all of those. So um, we have it installed on Orbeez machine here. I'm going to click on the little icon in the front. And we get a little search box. Um, and I'm going to say, I want oops, Lyme disease. Okay, and search. And so this is looking for stuff that's uh, got Creative Commons licenses. Um, and we've got a little filter here. So we can, similar to the Google search, we can say, I want something that I can use commercially or I can modify or adapt, right? Um, I want all licenses or, oops, is it thinking about that? There we go. Um, or I want a specific license. I'm gonna, I don't know what all the abbreviations stand for. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure what all the specifics are. So I'm just gonna say all of them. And then when I, when I look, I'll look at the details. Um, and then they have a whole bunch of different sources, right? I'm just gonna say, show, show them all. So I'm gonna apply that. And can make this bigger. And with that all license thing, like sometimes if we're just searching for one or two images, we'll do like Christine had done and just do the all licenses. Other times we might just um, print out or have readily accessible what all those codes mean. Um, and then you can uh, use the ones that are most um, applicable. Sorry, I just, I couldn't finish the sentence because I was looking at those and thinking like, gosh, that is not what I expected when we search for Lyme disease. So yeah, so, so we've got a whole different set of stuff to search for. Um, and so these ones appear to be drawings of, of folks. So you've got like the, the red from after, you know, you've been bit and all that kind of thing. Um, and someone's artwork. And we've got, uh, we've got some scenery pictures. That's interesting. 
Um, is that it? Eggs, yeah, food, food. So it's not, again, not foolproof. Um, and it just, it does just take time. It does. Right, to find exactly the right images uh, does just take a lot of time. So I'm gonna try nutrition just because. Okay, so again, uh, lots of different kinds of pictures. So we've got a nutrition label, that makes a certain amount of sense. Um, but then again, we've got what looks like people's uh, pictures from like trips and whatnot, right? So um, if it is labeled such, it will come up. Um, so it looks like someone's receiving some kind of awards. Um, yeah, so it just de depends on, on your search terms too. So like maybe um, if we're looking for, I don't know, broccoli. How do you spell broccoli? B-R-O-C-C? <laughs> I think so. Or no, nope. C-O-L-L-I. We'll see what happens. Yeah, so if you're doing some kind of uh, presentation or poster and it's about nutrition, maybe you want to look for apples or broccoli or, or something, right? So uh, sometimes a little bit of creativity is required. I will, I will spare you my favorite example, which is diabetic foot. Oh, you should have um, showed us that. <laughs> maybe on the next one. Maybe next time. <laughs> uh, one thing I will show you that th then this, I mean, yeah, the pictures are, are hit and miss, but the thing that I really like is if you click on that one picture, it creates the attribution for you, right? So it's got stir fried beef with broccoli by uh, babe underscore KL. It's licensed under CCBYNC 2.0. And it's got the links embedded in it and everything. So you could just copy that and paste that into your uh, PowerPoint or your, your, your document where you're making a poster or what have you. Um, so that kind of makes things a little bit easier in terms of figuring out exactly how you're supposed to uh, attribute these things. And, you know, the spirit of playing by the rules and all that kind of stuff. Okay, um, so that's the, the Creative Commons um, plugin. There's also a website, Creative Commons um, Search, that will do more or less the same thing. I don't think it does the, uh, uh, the auto attribution thing, but I could be mistaken. I haven't used it in a while. Um, just because we're running out of time, I'm going to move on real quick um, and sh show you an example of one of the, the subject-specific sites. Right, and so this one here is uh, from Stanford Medicine, it's the Lane Medical Library, um, and you can look for images, uh, and it has a nifty feature, we'll see it in a minute, but it illustrates on the screen where it kind of breaks things down by usage rates. So uh, let's see, if we want to look for um, Lyme disease, what do we get? Okay, so not a lot. Uh, or at least uh, not a lot in this category. So um, on the far left is maximum. Do you just want to maybe zoom in a little bit? Sure. Yeah. If you do that. There we go. Yeah. yeah. So um, the maximum usage, right? So we can click on this little question mark. So that's like your public domain stuff, right? So they've they've kind of hived that off. It's like you can for sure use this. Um, this one here with these these ticks uh, is broad usage rates. Okay, and so these ones are various Creative Commons licenses. So you can you can use them by virtue of the licenses that they've been tagged with. Right. Um, the next one is like the really big one, and it, this is like again the maybe they don't really want to say um, because this is coming from, um, for example, uh, a journal article, and that might be in PubMed Central, which is available and accessible, but whether or not you actually are able to take a picture and use it is is not clear, right? So if we click on the, um, they've got a whole spiel basically saying um, it's uh, the the source is the public domain, but maybe there's some fuzziness there, right? So you'd want to do some further investigation. But if you found like I don't know, maybe your this, quintessential Lyme disease picture. Yeah, these two guys maybe they sum up <laughs> Lyme disease perfectly. Or the two Venn diagrams. <laughs> or the two Venn diagrams. <laughs> Let's say you like this one. That's maybe the better. Um, you can click on it. It gives you a description, and it's, it says, "Oh well, there's the right statement." So it's the attribution share alike, right? And then you can go to the place place where they got it from. So visit the source page, um, and this is from Wikimedia Commons, actually. 
Um, so this is uh, got more information about that picture there as well, and 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 the nifty code for the Creative Commons license too. So um, that is that one. Um, and there's others. So there's um, uh, the US government, all of their stuff that they produce is in the uh, public domain. So um, things like the CDC, there's there's different image uh, databases and stuff there as well. And we've got some links to those in, um, in, in the, the handouts. Um, so depending on what you're looking for, you might want to kind of choose your sources and then move on from there, depending on whether or not you find what you like. So if you're looking for a sunset or something, that might be a little bit easier. Um, but at the same time, if you have a super specific uh, topic, for example, there's a, there's a, uh, where go? the cancer uh, visuals online, get this that quickly. Um, that might be a place to start if your topic is related to cancer, right? It's because it's very, very focused. Uh, one last thing before we wrap up and take some more questions um, is if you're looking for something that you want for patient information, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's definitely um, an occasion where you might need some images. So there's Medline Plus. Um, Medline Plus is, is a website. It is exclusively patient information. Um, it's produced by the National Library of Medicine in the States. Um, and they have um, an option to filter your search results by images. So if, let's do diabetes. Um, oops, here we go. So in their search, they've got a nifty little thing. It's like, hey, what is diabetes? Um, and a whole list of, of, of documents. But over on the site, you can say, well, I want images. And there are 33 images here. I'll make this a little bigger. I want images, or even there's videos too. All right, so click on images. Um, we can go, oh, there's a di di diabetes type one image. Um, so if this is along the lines of what you're looking for, then that's awesome. Um, and they've gotten very, very tiny letters at the bottom. Uh, can't quite read that. That's just about, <laughs> um, you can always zoom in. But okay. no, that's just about the, don't trust the internet to be your right. doctor. Fair enough. Yeah. Which, you know. <laughs> don't trust the internet <laughs> to be your doctor. doctor. Um, so there's that. Um, I will also point out uh, real quick that we have a uh, province-wide license to UpToDate. UpToDate also has um, some clinical images in there as well that you are able to use. So if, if, um, if you ever feel like playing around with that, that's always an option. Mm -hmm. So yes. So it is like 10 to 2. So I guess we should wrap things up and yeah. take questions if anybody's got questions. And I think the moral of, um, maybe we'll just go to our final slide here. Oh. Um, the moral of today's session is that whenever you're searching for images and you find an image that you like, you just have to kind of go through to it to assess whether you can use it or not. And if you can use it, what you're allowed to do with it or mm -hmm. how you need to attribute it. But it does take some time just to kind of go through those steps. Sometimes an easier option is just to pay for it. Yes. You know, like in Shutterstock, all those different, um, you know, stock image photos, it still takes time to go through them, but it does take out that time of, can I use it? Can I not? Can I this? Can I that? Mm -hmm. So, and some of them are really inexpensive, like under $3 or under a dollar. So if you are looking to, and you get really high quality resolution with them, if you are do, looking to do some like great promotional displays or that kind of thing, um, those might be your best option. Mm -hmm. The other option is if you can take the, if you have the means to take the photos, if it's photos you want, take yeah. the photos yourselves, draw the images yourself, those are some great options. Um, and then if you're looking for really, really, really specific things, there's some great public domain options where you can search and go wild and crazy. So like we mentioned, we'll be distributing the slides and there's a bunch of links to um, these different places where you can search, you know, besides like Google's a great place, the, Creative Commons is a great place, um, but then there's those really specialized, like all those US government mm. ones and that kind of thing. Yeah. 
So either they're all asleep uh, and have no questions, or we answered all of their burning questions um, and they, they haven't asked any. But we are available now for um, some questions before we conclude. And while you're typing those in, we thank you so much for joining us today. And if you've got any feedback, we are happy to hear it. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, so we might sign off in a moment here. If you do think of questions that you have, uh, you are welcome to send them to us. Um, and if you think that, or if you enjoyed today's session, make sure you check out our other recordings that are available at www.mynet.ca. And also, if you think your colleagues might be interested, please uh, send them along. And if, if you had any thoughts about how this session either didn't meet kind of your expectations or what you would like to see different, um, we'd love to hear that too. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much for joining us today. Bye.